there. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the relationship between religion and Christianity and mental illness. It's oftentimes a pretty tricky one to uh, navigate just because of the fact that a lot of the symptoms of mental illness kind of go against the fruits of the spirit that so many people look for when they are trying to identify a Christian or identify themselves as a Christian. I grew up in the church, I myself am a Christian, and I found as my symptoms of depression started to show themselves, a lot of shame came to me as well because I was thinking, well, I must be doing something wrong if I'm not able to access joy. In the Christian community, um, there is something called the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, tenderness, like those, those like kind of attributes where the idea is people who are not Christians should be able to look at you and see those things in you and that's how they know that there's something different. The problem is depression makes joy pretty inaccessible and as I started to lose the ability to reach out for the joy that had always been there for me I started to feel shame around the fact that I guess I must have been failing in some way I must have been failing God in some way if I was unable to be joyful if I was unable to be happy if I was unable to be patient with myself and all those kinds of things and as I've kind of grown throughout my journey and come to realize really what mental illness is, it's really helped me in my own journey with God to be able to, I guess, not write myself off and also kind of shed away some of that shame. A big thing for people is uh, their relationship with their parents. They feel that parents uh, look down on them for struggling with mental illness or maybe they don't understand it. And I think a lot of that stems from the way that the church has spoken about mental illness thus far. And not all churches have done it, but uh, for me growing up, I was taught about spiritual warfare, which is the idea of, there's a verse in the Bible that says, we do not war against flesh and blood, we war against principalities of evil in this world. And when I heard that the first time, it made total sense to me. Of course there's darkness and light in the world, and of course they're gonna be warring with each other. But the problem is, mental illness is a lot of times lumped into that. So in a church, if you come forward and you say, I'm struggling with depression, they might see it as a spiritual battle that you need to be guarding up in. And that kind of then breeds a new idea of what you need to be doing. You need to be reading your Bible more, you need to be praying more, you need to be um, listening, like getting rid of any like secular music and listening to worship music and all that kind of thing. And while those things are helpful for so many, for mental illness, which is at its core a chemical imbalance in the brain, it doesn't address that. It doesn't give room or grace for that area of it. And so for me, I struggled with thinking, I'm not doing enough, I'm failing in some way in my Christianity, and that really hurt me for a really long time and caused me to actually run away from God when I could have been running to Him. So I think at its core, it's the misunderstanding of what mental illness is in the church. And I think the problem is we see mental illness as a spiritual battle. And in reality, like I said earlier, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. It is an illness. It is not a mindset that somebody has chosen. It is not attributes that somebody has decided to put on for fun or to get attention. It is an illness that people are genetically predisposed to for various reasons. When someone is struggling with Lyme's disease in the church, the church is not going to say, well, this is spiritual warfare. You need to just pray a lot about it more and all that kind of thing. They would say, obviously, we're going to pray for healing in you. We believe that can happen. But at the same time, be going to doctors, be taking medication and things like that. And mental illness is no different. You can still pray. You can still pour into scripture and you can still seek God, but you can also get help from medical professionals. God is not anti-medicine. He's not against us getting the help that we need. He is for us just being closer to Him. And if being closer to Him means being on medication or talking to a therapist once a week so that you can make sense of the things that are going on in your mind so that then you can approach His throne boldly, then that's what He wants. It's not something where it's cut and dry, this and that, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. It's complicated it's messy and it's tricky because we're human beings so for me I struggled a lot with um, not being able to find joy and that kind of comes from also a misunderstanding of what joy is joy is not that everything is perfect and that you're in a perky happy mood all the time joy is a state of the heart it's the idea that your heart is moving forward regardless of what is being presented to you in the real life joy is that mindset of your heart of things will be better sooner or later they will be better joy is hope in and of itself 
and so joy is not being in one mood joy is not a mood it's a heart set and so uh, when, when I kind of started to understand that I was able to kind of I guess piece together okay I'm not no longer joyful I'm struggling in the season but I can still be joyful somehow so let's figure out how I'm gonna do that for me it looked like reaching out to other people and finding deeper relationships through that it looked like going to therapy sessions and finding those moments of light that I knew were there but had been buried by my mental illness. For me, joy is not something where every day I wake up and I'm thrilled to be alive suddenly and everything's perfect. Joy is I wake up and I don't want to get out of bed and it's really hard and right now I'd rather just isolate myself but still knowing I have hope because I have God. And so I just wanted to make this video because in the Christian community, mental health it, mental illness and mental health is still really misunderstood and it's still very stigmatized and so I wanted to kind of cast my voice out into the void to kind of say hey you can be a believer and struggle deeply with depression and anxiety and eating disorders and other things like that it doesn't make me less of a believer it doesn't make God love me less it doesn't make me love God less that's a big thing too I don't hate God because I have this I see him in a new light from a different perspective because of the ability that I've been given to go through trials and things like that. It's just really important to me that people who love God don't give up on him because they feel ashamed to go to him because of what they're struggling with. God is not waiting for you to be perfect. He is not waiting for you to be ready. He's just waiting for you. He just wants to know you. and so. I think that mental illness does its best at trying to make us isolate from people around us. We see that in our everyday lives. Uh, when I'm in my depressions and when I'm really struggling, the last thing I want is to interact with people. And so of course God is looped into that as well. The last, the last thing I want to do is go to the perfect creator of the universe when all I want to do is hide and disappear forever. But. I also know that there's intense beauty in those moments when I do reach out to people, when I do reach out to God. And so mental health and religion and your Christianity and relationship with God do not have to cancel one another out. It's something that allows you to walk beside God in a different way and to lean on Him in a new way. It's not a flaw of your Christianity. It doesn't mean that you've been doing something wrong. It's not a punishment. It's an illness, just like any other illness. And so. The biggest thing that I could say to people who are struggling or who people whose parents don't understand or things like that is really just to help your parents understand, look at this, there are brain scans that show that people with depression literally have chemical imbalances. There is, There are endless studies to show that this is actually a thing, medication can treat it. This is not me struggling with spiritual warfare, this is me struggling as a human in a fallen world. And so I would encourage you, if you know somebody who's struggling in the church, that you would just come alongside them and encourage them as you would someone else who was struggling with an illness that was physical and you could see it. I encourage you, if you are in the church and you are struggling with mental illness, to not shy away from God, but to rather seek out the people that you can surround yourself with and feel safe and supported by because they understand truly. It's hard because it is still misunderstood, it is still stigmatized but the greatest way to break stigma is to speak out. And so it doesn't mean that you have to speak out, you have to become an advocate, but it does mean that there is hope for that and that there are people that are rising up as we speak to work on breaking that stigma. So that's what I just wanted to talk to you guys about today. It's a shorter video just because it's simple at its core. God still loves you, you still love God. None of that changes because you are struggling with chemical imbalances in your mind or because you are going through a bout of depression, anxiety, bipolar, anything like that. None of that cancels out the love that you have for God and the love, and the love that God has for you. So I just wanted to encourage you in that way today. Thank you so much. If you have any experiences in the church that were positive or negative, I encourage you to share them so that we can kind of start a discussion around ways that the church could improve in their handling of mental illness. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys later.